Welcome back to the School of Sense. It's Challenge Tuesday. No, it's not. Why oh, no. Challenge Tuesday? It's question. That's why you're not question master. This is question and answer session number eight. We just did an intro. This and is then... the second take. Actually, yeah. We're taking a piss out because apparently I don't know what's going on. But it turns out you. It's Q and A eight, and I've lost my job. <laughs> yes, yeah, question master. You've got a lot of work to do to get back to question master. Uh, I've got a couple of questions before we kick things off. One is, Billy Dragon, I've got a question for him. Um, thanks for your comments. But is that really a name? And like, really is your surname name. Dragon? Are you Mr. Dragon? Like, <laughs> and even if you're not, just reply and lie, because that will make me happy. Then you change your name. But now I've told you to lie, then I don't know if you are lying when, you know. Is yeah, that, Dragon. It's to be Dave Dragon. It's like on... Uh, <laughs> yeah, on... <laughs> Um, Jeff, much better than Jackson. What film? What film? What's Will Ferrell one? that Step Brothers, but it's like you have to call me Dragon. What's the other one? One thing you need to say about Dave is he's only ever seen about three films. Playing Crosby and Lee. That's one of them. Tim Dragon is the yeah. other one. Um, that's about it, I think. And then the other question was: um, someone wants to see our camera, man or woman? Oh yeah. It's Harvey, a... Victory Visuals. He is coming in. Here we go. Legend. Absolute legend. This is a guy who actually makes us look half decent. <laughs> <laughs> but check him out. If you need some photography video of work, just Google Victory Visuals and check him out. He's a ledge. Very good at what he does. Right. So, let's kick things off in true scorecast and it's Q&A fashion. Well, not true because it's not me asking the question, but Tim. Um, Upgraded calisthenics. And just you know. keep it on the theme of an enormous number of uh, compliments first to get your question read out. Yeah. So I have to correct. say, well done, you are definitely People are getting the picking up on this, what yeah. we like. Yeah. Uh, so this question comes in on YouTube from Andy Me 203 uh, He says he Is loves that his real name? Possibly. Um, he <laughs> loves the videos more than Kim Kardashian loves a camera. Like, that is a, uh, that's probably up there with a level of compliments. I, yeah. I don't really watch any of that sort of stuff. Yeah, I've got no real I think idea. I could walk past her in the street, you know, and that's I wouldn't know. Agreed. I'm the same. But I've heard of her. I have a general disdain for people that are famous for doing nothing. Yeah. I don't know what she's famous for apart from... I really don't know anything that's going on in the world. That's not the question though. Sorry. Um, so he says, as someone in their mid-40s who has been doing cardio and calisthenic type training for about a year, I'm totally impressed with the more advanced calisthenics moves. My question is, are calisthenics and advanced moves achiev achievable for, and realistic for older people? Now, I, 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 I would like to just start very quickly just by saying, and how old did he say it was? Uh, 41, was that right? I don't right? know if it actually, no, it doesn't say. Ah, that was maybe a different one. Oh, mid 40s, yeah, yeah. Mid 40s, yeah. And so, in, I think you can answer it or, or add something very quickly that no one will necessarily believe, but. Um, but you're so, not in your mid 40s. <laughs> yeah. Well, one is that I'm not in my mid 40s, but Tim is closer to his mid 40s than I am, so Tim is not as spring chicken as these. Boyish good ones might <laughs> lead you to believe. So. My answer is like, yes, like, age is a number in my... Well, I'm 36. Yeah. So I started kind of six, three and a half years ago. So I didn't start when I was like yeah. 15. So this is, this is relatively new. So like I would... I mean, Dave's like a year younger than me. I don't think you would believe it. Surprising. I don't know. But, um, yeah, sorry, come on. Yeah, no, and that... And the, it, it doesn't, like, it doesn't matter. Like, obviously, like, they're old. Like, there's certain physiological things start to happen as we get older and, like... I'd still love to be able to be that random, that guy on Facebook that you see that's 65 years old and he does a, he does a flag and everyone thinks it's amazing. It's still shredded. <laughs> yeah, but it, it, it depends, like you can, be, you can be 20 and starting out and you've got, if you've got no training history of literally you haven't done anything other than just eat crisps on the sofa, like it's going to take you a long way to get to an area, to, to achieve certain yeah. things that you might want to do. But it's also like, uh, you may people this might come as a bit of a surprise like I love doing some of the, like the the cool stuff and it's great but the the whole point is to just to it for me is enjoy training enjoy what we do and be like healthy and the the sort of being able to do a flag or a lever or having something to try and do like a planche I can't do yet is that's just like one of the motivators to like carry on training and that enjoyment of doing something I haven't done before, like that, that inspires me or keeps me motivated. Um, but 
the long term is about like being able to still use my body and being able to do stuff when yeah. when we're older and if there's going to be a stage when I die that's the same for everyone but there's going to be a stage when I can't do a flag anymore yeah and if like I get if it's if I get to that's going to be like then a really sad day if I like get really if that's my thing rather than actually which I guess but you know I mean? if my thing is actually I want to be I just want to be able to use my body and be healthy then I can be confident that when I'm, if I make it to 75, 80, 90, if as long as I keep moving and keep using it effectively and correctly, then I'm going to have that. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I think one of the big things that I've, as I've come into calisthenics that I think about is what do I want to be able to do when I'm 70? Mm-hmm. And I want to be able to move well. And I, there's a little bit around some of the S&C side of stuff which comes into this. Is, is I've, got, I've got to a point, like we've, from being in the industry for sort of, nine years or so, like I've tried pretty much all the different forms of training. I've lifted heavy stuff, I've trained for size, I've trained for endurance, I've trained for power, so I kind of know Can like... you your legs? Don't start on that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but one of the things that I'm going to lead on to that point is how do I feel yeah. about sticking, trying to stick 150 kilos on my back? Like compressing my spine, trying to squat with it, how does it make my knees feel? Yeah. Like I've seen videos of Ronnie Coleman, fair play to him, but a guy, I don't think he, how old is Ronnie Coleman? I don't even know. But he can't walk, and he's certainly got a good, probably, if he lives through his full life, he's got a good 25 years on him. But he'll be like, I don't regret one moment of that. And I'm like, well, come on, Ronnie, like, you actually, you can't walk. Mm. So there's some stuff around that where you go, actually, it, when I'm not now not training for sport, I've, I've experienced those forms of training, I know what I need to do from a work perspective, I've, I, I understand adaptation. So now it's about enjoyment and what do I want to, be able to do longer term? I want to stay healthy. So that's one of the major driving forces for me about why I love that. And, and then you can kind of start looking at some stuff around the exercise science of it. Like your body, my bone mass is quite light. When I first started training, if I remember when I was in Australia, I started to the gym, I weighed myself, I was 68 kilos. That's light, right? I haven't got a big frame. So when people, Jackie says, did you train your legs? I just, have, I just actually haven't got a big frame. Like I'm not <laughs> a big guy. Um, so for me, trying to stick a load of weight on a bar is never really going to be my forte. But also like your body's going to be able to build about... 2.4 times um, the amount of bone mass you've got in muscle mass. So 2.4 times muscle mass related to bone mass. So if I've got a light frame and I come in at 68 kilos, there's gonna be an upper limit of how much those bones are gonna to want to handle in terms of yeah. muscle mass. So me trying to be 90 kilos is just ridiculous. And why I'm talking about that is that it just feeds into going like, I've come to accept what I'm good at and I'm not good at lifting heavy weights. Yeah. My shoulders are hypermobile, they're trying me to bench 120 kilos, I'm gonna dislocate, I'm gonna have problems. Calisthenics makes me feel great, yeah. I really enjoy it. Can you start when you're older? Yes, you're just gonna to have to undo more years of potential neglect and, and issues around yeah. postural, re, um, postural correction work because you just smash your body for a bit longer than if yeah. you start when you're 16. I've got a little boy at home, like he leant over, he leant over this morning, he sat on the floor and he put his nose <laughs> on the ground and I'm like, crikey, your hip mobility is good. <laughs> like, but he, yeah. he, over years, that's just gonna get worse. Whether you yeah. play sports and we talk about like your body tells a story yeah. of the decisions that you've made in your life. And whether that's you made a decision to sit down a lot, well, you're gonna to have to undo some of that sort of stuff if you want to get into some like lower body plyometrics or pistol squats. And what's right? nice is you're talking about going, being not trying to be someone you're not, or not trying to mm. make a body that you're not like, just working with what you've got and just being the best version of yourself. And I think the assumption is if you're in your mid 40s, then you've got a lot to undo, but you could be 25 and you've like smashed your body to pieces because you were doing. Martial, I don't know, like some con- some heavy contact sport, and actually got a load of past injuries compared to a guy who's forty. Actually, he's just been relatively steady. Yeah. Goes to yoga every now and again, and actually, it's quite flexible. Yeah, yeah. Like it, it's more that idea of like story. Your body currently now tells a story of what you've done in the mm. past, and like your starting point is your starting point. And we're quite big on this. Like it's your journey. Like understand where you're at now, what you need to improve on. And there isn't necessarily like a right or wrong. Whether you want to be able to do a flag or not, that's up to you. If mm. you want to just do some like some of the basics and just and, and just build just build some strength and some good ranges of motion just with your body weight and you can do that at home rather than yeah. having to go to the gym and that's like your thing, then that's right. awesome as well. It My take home, if you're starting later in life, is train intelligently. Like yeah. train smarter. Like if you if you're 18 and you want to get into calisthenics, you shouldn't do anything. Like your body will adapt and you'll, you'll be absolutely fine. Like you probably, because you'll be able to do more volume, you'll be able to get away with doing more. When you're a bit older, 
you're going to feel that recovery a little bit more. And I'm mm. not a big on for being to make excuses about being older, but the reality is the body starts to kind of change in certain ways, as you refer to. Mm. So just be clinical and just be just actually put more structure in place. But I don't think if I started my mid forties rather than three and a half years ago, knowing what we know now, yeah. I don't doubt that I'd be able to do some of the things that yeah. I can now do. It would, I, th- I think it just comes down to the fact that like. You don't get strong because you get old. You get you, oh, you don't get weak because you get old. You get weak because you stop training to be strong. Like you see these yeah. people that are older. Like eight, I've seen eighty year olds on on YouTube and, and whatever. And yeah, maybe they're genetically doing all right, but they're yeah. not weak. They're still in great nick because yeah. they didn't stop training. Most people have become sedentary and a bit more immobile and, and, and fall over in the streets because they stopped training. Yeah, I think in I, midlife. Yeah, like I. But final thing from it, just you've just made me think of something like. I finished playing, I retired from rugby when I was 32, I think, um, or 31, and then done, took me a little bit of time to recover, but like, got three years of calisthenics, or three and a half years of calisthenics, and now 30, am I 35? 2017? 45. 35. Um, that... If I'd have gone from, so when I was playing rugby, we were doing lots of weight training, not lows to be fair, but weight training, sprinting, power stuff. And if I'd have finished calisthenics and just done like, sorry, finished rugby and actually just carried on doing what I would have wanted to do and just maybe done like, I'd have done loads of weighted pull-ups and weighted dips and stuff like that. I'm not calling it calisthenics, it's just general training in the gym, bench press and whatever else I like doing, but just got really mm-hmm. strong for like three, four, five, six years. And then seeing calisthenics when I'm 40, and go, yes, I'd have been chronically probably tight in my shoulder, but it would have been horrific. But I would have been in, I reckon I would have been in a great position in terms of strength and stronger now than yeah. I am, because I don't do enough of that basic stuff now, which is yeah, something yeah. I've talked about before, but like, and that's something I'm going to do. But like, I'd be in a really good position from that. Mm. All right, good. I hope that helps. Okay, uh, Tim, uh, I won't call you question master uh, for various reasons, but uh, what is, or hit us up with question number two. So this one's from Jerry Street. I'm actually going to paraphrase a little bit because it, it was a reasonably long, but thanks Jerry, it's a great point. So he says that he loves our videos. I was going to say, presumably um, he starts with the comment. He did, because that's how you get on. Um, it says he likes a style that we take a realistic approach to, to the way that we look at new movements. So his question is based around, like, he trains a lot of people in parkour, American Ninja Warrior, um, obstacle racing, free run as well as calisthenics, but finds that people want to come into calisthenics and they want to do the, the exciting stuff straight away. So they, and they, he might do a flag or a single arm push up and they say to him, well, what's the trick? The one, then when he writes a, a program for them, puts in like body weight rows, pull ups, squats and lunges, they're like, oh no, it's boring. Like I don't, I don't really want to do it. I want to do the exciting stuff. So his question really um, is that how do we get our clients to take a realistic approach to strength and fitness? and get them to work through, I think, some progression rather than just going, I want to do a front lever. Yeah. So this is, a, this is something that we, we actually kind of, we talk about loads um, because we, we, obviously we've got our school of cal- calisthenics framework, which gives people a progression to we'll look towards learning anything. So literally someone can come to us and go, right, I want to do a flag and we'll go, right, here's the steps that you need to go through. And that's based on exercise science, strength and conditioning principles. We're going to have to do some movement preparation, we have to learn a new movement pattern, and then we've got to get specifically strong and increase, increase global strength to be able to do that. So we, we, to support that, we've then got something we call our locker, which is a series of different tools. And within that, we've got things like isometrics, eccentrics, um, weighted stability, angles and levers. So we've got lots of different ways in which we can adapt and change an exercise. So even if we take something like a back lever, for example, We'll use a band across the rings to be able to get anybody to feel what a back lever feels like safely. If we go through a few progressions on yeah. let's improve range of movement, yeah. let's teach you the movement pattern of the skin, the cat, and now let's put you on a band. It might be a green band, so loads of resistance, and then you can actually feel what a back lever feels like. But on the back of that, I'll take home message from a workshop, which is often, don't get stuck at the movement pattern phase. Don't come in and try and do a human flag that you can only, which you can't hold or you can yeah. hold for a split second because it's not an effective way to learn. The one thing that you need to do is go away and get strong. But I think we get away with yeah. that because we can, because of the tools and the framework, we can give people a glimpse of it yeah. without necessarily overloading the system. And like you mentioned in the question, like not risking injury or increasing the risk of injury too high. And we can do that quite safely. So people can feel the do calisthenics and then we're going to um, load the program in the direction of getting strong. Yeah. I think like th- there's two things um, from me that are completely based on those lines in that we get it's getting them to buy in 
to what we're going to show them. Yeah. Partly, and, and the two of those reasons would be we're brutally honest with them at the beginning and go, I made these mistakes when I was learning to, let's use human flags. I made the mistake of coming in and just once I knew what the team was just kicking up and holding for like 0.1 of a second and it's just a flipping near yeah. enough waste of time. And that's brutal honesty about our training, not about where they're at. Yeah, not where they're yeah. yeah. Going, this is what, these, and, that, and then it took me uh, three, four, five, six months to be able to do a flag, mm. whereas when we've, we've got like evidence, like there's a, one on YouTube using the um, uh, human flag example of like three guys we took through our progressive program that we've since developed, um, that they learn it in seven weeks, yeah. And I'm like massively jealous because they've learned it like <laughs> been ten times faster than I did. But because we had out the chaff from that, yeah. all that confusion around. Yeah, there's so much stuff you could do. We've actually stripped it down to first principles around each one of those movements, but within that, giving people the opportunity yeah. to feel like they're actually doing something which yeah. is a bit like a flag. And then, the, and then the other thing is, and this is something that Tim's like very, very good at, is going when we because we do it with the when we're training a Paralympic athlete the same. When we're giving you an exercise to do or giving somebody an exercise to do, it might just be as simple as a, a push-up or um, I'd use the human flag example again. Our like, T push-up progression for the bottom arm is basically a side plank for the straight arm. Yeah. And we don't just go, and Tim wouldn't just go, uh, right, you're going to do side plank, 10, 30 seconds, three, three, three lots of holding that. Mm. We'll go, right, this is going to be your bottom arm. We're going to adjust it with this external rotate position on a slight angle because that is the same shape you're doing for um, the human flag. And it's a, it's a, it's a foundation exercise. It's a beginner's mm. exercise. It's, it's really simple, but they are feeling like and they're generating some some uh, movements that are exactly like the flag so they feel like they're yeah. working towards something rather than i i, I do think if we were at a workshop we just said right everyone now do uh, a side plank with this arm straight it'd be like this is boring yeah yeah go do it do it this do it like this to do to do because it's for your flag it's like you're doing the same thing but you're getting that buy-in yeah. from them but it's also like you say it's that progression of what we do next from that so we're not yeah. going to go like on the floor let's do this basic T push up movement, and then our next progression from there to take them to a flag might be like a, a vertical flag or an angle flag, yeah. and straight away they get to go, ah, okay, they can see where it's that's going. That's important. And um, that gets that buy in. Yeah. You need that buy in if you're going to have somebody carry on doing it. And the phrase that we use is you have to earn the right to progress. If you don't, you jump too far ahead. So you want to try and do, I don't know, trying to work on a muscle up or whatever, or handstand is a great example. You're just trying to kick up, you're trying to finish the movement. You get to a point where you go, do you know what? I'm, I haven't either got the movement pattern, I haven't got the skill acquisition, I'm not strong enough. And you have to go all the way back to, to somewhere close to the beginning and rebuild that stuff up. So if you actually earn the right to progress, it's a real humbling thing about mm -hmm. going, actually, you're going to earn the right to the human flag with, <clears throat> safely, properly, then just take your time, like do mm -hmm. it, go through the stages. Seth, one of our, the guys who started working with us, as one of our coaches, he quotes C.S. Lewis and says, the longest way around, the shortest way home. Sometimes it feels like it, you've got to go a bit longer to yeah. get actually back. But if you actually just try and jump stages, it takes ages. And what happens is you do stuff, like he said in this question, you do, then you end up doing stuff that's too hard for yourself. And the, the danger with that is you aren't strong enough and like things like your connective tissue and all mm -hmm. that, that hasn't actually developed. And then the risk of injury is super high. And yeah. I make that mistake all the time. And that's something I'm honest with the people and it's like something I need to really try to be better at but at the same time making mis make as a coach making mistakes helps us yeah. fine tune what we then give you to do so that you learn quicker you stay injury free because yeah. um, you're not doing the mistakes that yeah. we make yeah cool right I'm gonna say, we've got a question for Tom Miller but I'm gonna do that last because it's gonna open a can of worms up and I'm saving myself for it but the, the, the third one we're going to do is try and squeeze in four. We're going to go through a guy called John Goat. Oh, when I'm question master team, we never do four. Well, I think I like to offer more value to the people mm. my, in my position as question that's, master. It's just it's, that's backfire, isn't it? <laughs> right. So um, I'm going to do five next time. John has given us a slightly, so six minute ad, slightly backhanded compliment. Ad. I'm trying to do my job now. Sorry. Um, he says, hi guys, loving the videos, in brackets, obligatory compliments as requested. So, I've, I've, Ooh, less I don't know. I'm not sure, I'd have, I'm not sure, yeah, that yeah, seems like he's really. playing us for fools. But dude. he's also said, he's just discovered Kai Saints at 41, so you'll benefit Where from you been? your question. Yes. Um, and love the idea it. that you can use, your, that, you're, your, that you are your own gym, and he says that we can use that phrase if you want to. However, 
He goes Has he got a royalty? <laughs> no, somebody <laughs> wrote a book about that with that same title, You Are Your Own Gym. Has he got, has he got, ago. Has he got a... Um, well, I don't think I do when your question master is talk over you. <laughs> What's the, has he got a trademark? <laughs> we have. Have you finished talking? Yep. Um, so we start with the free guard, a handstand book, and he's wondering, do we do any weight training or free weight training to support uh, our calisthenics training or not? Also, a lot of the videos and techniques focus on the upper body and core, but presumably you would incorporate the lower body into your routines and how do you achieve this? And finally, we'd love a workshop in Glasgow and Edinburgh. So I'll go first. We've got one in Newcastle that's as far north as we're going this year. Um, next we'll year, we'll the link in the description. Yeah. It definitely come to that. We, had a, we did one in Newcastle uh, last, year. last year. Was it? It might have been this year. I can't remember. Well, we have done one in Newcastle before, and there was a number of guys come down from. Edinburgh and Glasgow, so... Seems it's you've got so much to say, why don't you carry on? Yeah, yeah so, um, I've, back in the day, like, and it depends what you, what you have to, when I was playing rugby, I needed strong legs, so I need to be powerful, like, and I need to be fast, so, like, I've, probably something around, I think I've done, like, 160 kilo for, like, three reps or something, was my, was my best, and for a relatively, I was one of the smallest guys in the team, it was really mm. reasonable uh, strength aspect, but, like, I don't need my legs to be that strong now and I actually enjoy working on, like you said, being able to move well. So like for me, um, a, a, a pistol squat, so a single leg squat with that leg out, like really challenges like my ankle mobility, my hip mobility, my hamstring length on that leg that's outstretched. And for me, like on that, that load on one, of my whole body weight on one leg um, is tough. Like I can't do 10 like yeah. easily. Um, and then with shrimp squats and stuff as well and actually quite enjoying like I'm doing a bit of yoga stuff at the moment and I enjoy just like trying to for me you, you're much more mobile than me like for me mm. um, trying to open up my hips and get into better positions like my, we joke, my straddle position to like <laughs> I can probably do a straddle plank if I could actually spread my legs apart yeah, but at the same time that it's like, <laughs> they're so close together because I can't actually get them apart um, <laughs> And like, like press the handstand, yeah. like if I've got better hamstring. So like working on range for me at the moment is more um, important because I'm understanding that actually that's where I'm most deficient yeah, or yeah. that's where I'm weakest or worst at. And actually working on what you find most difficult can be beneficial. Yeah. But, uh, I think there's some stuff. I, people pick out some things occasionally for us and they send us a question, you are, you boys skip a leg day again. I was like, oh, do you do leg day? And I was like, I've got a couple of points I'm going to put out of this because it did burn me. I've got a little bit of blog to write on this. The first thing is, yes, I do sometimes skip leg day, but I also <laughs> skip upper body day yeah. quite regularly because of what my schedule is like. So it's not like I intentionally don't do it. I've got a certain amount of training time in the week that means that I can get a certain amount of stuff done and there's things that I prioritise over others. Yeah, I don't prioritise um, legs over at the moment over. <laughs> yeah, but I have got. I use. I will use some like some some lunges. We do some um, like Nordic curls. We've got. I'll put some squats back in my program. So it is an evolving thing. I do some cleans for my lower body. It's more of a kind of like a holistic thing. I'm not a bodybuilder. I've had absolutely no interest in doing gym and volume training ten times ten on squats, so that people can look at me and go, "Oh, you've got big quads." I, I've got no interest in that. And the other, the other thing is, we talk about pistol squats, so people go a body weight, single leg squat movement. Like, I know a lot of strong people in the past who are strong because they lift weights to do squats. They were nowhere near being able yeah, to do a pistol yeah. squat because they don't have the stability, they don't have the range of movement, and actually that means they can't even be strong in that bottom position. Yeah. So, for me, it's a little bit around, yes, we do. We, we, so we focus the beginner's guide on upper body movements because that's where we're going to start to push the people through with the calisthenics, the, the flags and the handstands, that type yeah. of sort of stuff. And also for us, from a, from a professional perspective as SNC coaches, to start to open up that, that box of lower body training, people are so dysfunctional in the, in the hips, knees and ankles, that for us to start to train people in, or give advice around a lower body training is a whole bigger subject yeah, yeah, yeah. than what was within the scope of the beginner's guide. No, I, didn't, I didn't want yeah. to open up at that yeah. stage because we it, it's not, yeah, this is, if you go back, we actually did a video on pistol squats. Yeah, I was going to say, there's two, there's two videos, part one part two of pistol squats looking at ankle range of motion, hip range of motion, and how to train and develop that for your pistol squat. 10% of that is that actually out. only how to do a pistol squat, 90% of it is the preparation work to enable you to actually yeah. get into the shape in the first place. Um, if people want a bit more like low body stuff, we can do some of the things like shrimp squats are definitely um, one we should be doing and we yeah. can... It is a question we've had before a workshop, like would you ever do a lower body... like? You know, whatever people want, we're keen to provide mm. for you. So, um, if it is something people are interested, we'll in. do low body. So, we're, we're, in terms of how do I look at low body training, single leg, like Jacko says, pistol squats and, and shrimp squats. 
I like the idea of plyometric being in there, but again, that's a big thing. You've got to have good lower body mechanics before we want to start introducing plyometric training into, into workouts. I like lunge patterns. And just to throw something to me, it's a conversation we've been speaking about this week is, is calisthenics, or is squatting a calisthenics movement or is lunging a calisthenics movement or a resistance training exercise? Because a body weight squat would be calisthenics, but when you put a back squat on it, it becomes a resistance exercise. Well, that's both the resistance training exercises because we're moving a set amount of, yeah. we're moving a weight, There's the, the muscle is under tension. Just like a weighted pull-up, is, is that a free weight exercise or is that a body weight exercise yeah. because a pull-up is calisthenics? Yeah. So I think let's morph and change what that looks like rather than going, this is, you do calisthenics, that means you don't do back squat. Well, maybe I just see back squat as a calisthenics weighted exercise. Yeah. Different yeah. way of looking at it. Just, yeah, to, to wrap up his question about, um, do we use weights at all? Is it just calisthenics? It, it fits in nicely with that in that I would say upper body wise, I just do calisthenics. But for me, that does involve, because pull-ups are strong. Like if I want to create an overload, I'll put a weighted belt on and yeah. do 10, 15, 20, whatever kilo pull-ups. And I'm considered that um, calisthenics. Mm -hmm. So that's the only sort of where I'd use weights and then actually go in, well, that makes that point relevant in terms of going, well, what's the difference between putting on you can put on a weighted vest and do, do your squats yeah. and do your pistols and go, that's right. But as soon as it's a bar on your back, yeah. then we're it's going, different. oh, no, it's different. But really, it's the same. Yeah. We're just creating an overload. But it's it's understanding, like, do you need to create an overload or a five pull-ups still hard for you and mm -hmm. therefore just with your body weight and therefore you're, like, you're working in that sort of max strength rep range and actually you just need to stick yeah. with that. And the final thought is it depends what you want. Like, do you want to move well or do you want to be quadzilla? Like, there's, there's two different approaches there. Yeah, you yeah. And train differently for yeah, each other. And it's not right and wrong. It's just like what no, you it's want. Not, yeah. yeah. Right, last question then. Tom Miller. We, Tom came to Bonus our, question. Yeah, it is. Came, Number four. Okay, yeah. So, Tom Miller came to one of our workshops in, I want to say, Ashbourne. Yes, Derbyshire. Uh, we live down south. Um, Tom's a great guy. He's a, um, he trains, he's a PTI, a physical training instructor in with the Marines. He's not um, afraid of giving out a compliment. Absolute legend. Yeah, no. So, Tom, I'm going to do it like, there's only so much I can handle actually without feeling slightly embarrassed um, and you've definitely tipped me over that, yeah. that edge there. But I got thank to about you. 500, well, read about 500 words <laughs> and I was like, I think he's joking. <laughs> so we, Tom and I did chat about this on the workshop but it's an interesting one because it, it links to how we might incorporate conditioning or metabolic conditioning into a calisthenics type workout. Obviously when, when Tom's working with the Marines he's got people that are um, training away from home, not always got a lot of kit, so they've got body weight, maybe a basic rig, but it's, they haven't certainly got like a fully functional gym or kitted out gym all the yeah. time that they can train it. So um, Tom's question sort of fits in, he goes, um, so how do we sort of basically maintain a basic level of strength and some, some CV or some cardiovascular training uh, where short bursts of force production required, that's what the guys need for their jobs. Um, he thinks it could be a lot of, uh, there's a lot of benefit, but basically how do we see that calisthenics fits into a conditioning type workout? Dave. Um, let me draw upon my own experiences and then you can mm -hmm. go into like what that might actually look like. Um, so Tim's already mentioned a little bit about like being realistic and like what you, what's your schedule like. There's certain things I'm working on and want to work on that like pretty much take up my week. So I might get like three decent sessions done if I'm lucky and then I'll touch on some other things. Um, but that is basically strength-based mm. calisthenics stuff. Some of that might be at home and some of that might be at the gym. Um, and then in terms of like conditioning or or CV work, but if it, like in terms of, it depends what you're asked to. A lot of people, I think you're talking about conditioning to actually get sort of fitter, whereas a lot of people might be looking at it going, conditioning because they want to like uh, lose like in, improve their body composition so like maintain muscle lose fat yeah. and sort of look better um, and a lot of that for me that aspect of it comes from eating well and then the training that I'm doing is is got enough I'm trying to make sure you're doing enough volume enough reps and sets mm -hmm. that you're actually going to get a bit of that my sort of CV side of things come in where um, my wife really likes running, quite enjoy running together. We do park runs, so like, there are park runs across the yeah. world, I'm pretty sure, um, where it's like Saturday mornings, it's 5K. Um, so didn't I used to hate just long distance running, um, but quite enjoy that now. So like my CV, and then and we've got a road bike, and so go out literally just for sort of fun. No like training session reps and sets and all this sort of malarkey, but going for a run, going out on my bike, 
that's like where my, I consider my like CV slash conditioning coming in and that's that's just whenever we do it we try and do mm. something once a week but that's just for fun of us two sort of together yeah um, I'm not I don't have time in my schedule to put in like a uh, for well I could I could just drop a different session yeah, yeah. and do like a metabolic conditioning else. but uh, for me that's not what I want at the yeah. moment um, so I, I'll, I'll pick up on this from a uh, let's go to an SNC sports performance side because effectively like, Tom's working with military personnel yeah. so the, the, there's, a, there's a performance element to what they're doing a big performance component um, so if you P90X insanity workout People are going to go, oh, it's a good workout. Like, you do that, do you? No. <laughs> do you know why it's a good workout? Because somebody went and picked a load of hard stuff and put it in a circuit. Yeah. And like, so if you do loads of hard stuff and you don't rest in between it, You'll then you're going to get tired. <laughs> so if we're looking for anything which is going to improve cardiovascular fitness, improve conditioning, where it's anything which is going to create a sustained elevation in, in heart rate, the higher we get that, the different sort of training adaptation we're going to be. So if we're going to get people to work for short bursts of high duration work, and we're going to get them to work up to 90% max zone fours and fives of our kind of heart rate um, yeah. parameters, then we're going to get an adaptation. We're stressing the body to a point where it says, I don't like what you've done to me there. You've done enough to encourage me to make adaptations. Yeah. So when you come and do this again, you're going to be better because I'll change because of what to you've done you, yeah, to me. Yeah, yeah. So as long as we're doing that, it really doesn't matter whether that's a burpee, a squat jump, whether it's a, a, a 20 meter repeat sprint effort, the, the, the simple job was to look at the environment and go, right, I've got a 30 meter or a 10 meter square piece of space in the middle of a compound in, in Afghanistan or wherever you might be, yeah. and go, how am I gonna use that space? How am I gonna use the kit that I've got? And just start to pick things which are hard, things which are tiring, and keep the rest short. Like if we're resting for more than 30 seconds and we want a metabolic out, um, a metabolic improvement, then we just need to question why are we resting for longer? If we want about three to five minutes worth of rest in between that, we're looking for more, you, can you put down a maximum effort sprint time yeah. where it might be you can actually consistently put down four or five reps which are roughly the same sort of duration. Yeah. Whereas if you're gonna do six sets off a of bounce and it's gonna be sprint there, walk back recovery, we're gonna see some drop off, which means that we're then starting yeah. to create a little bit of aerobic, anaerobic adaptation. So easily you could fit into some some, some movements. And the difficult thing with, with body weights where you've not got a lot of kit is pulling. So yeah. have you got a set, have you got something we can hang from? Can you do pull-ups? Can you super set that straight into a, into a press-up? Can we go pull-up, down? push up, jump back up onto the bar, yeah. can we start to rep some of that sort of stuff? I like the idea that like partner, I mean, that's something we need to yeah. do in like, uh, where someone holds and they're actually getting a bit of an isometric holding position where someone else is actually yeah. doing a bodyweight row, yeah, yeah. Uh, holding onto them. Things like battle ropes, I'm a big fan of conditioning for your body, we use yeah. those loads with swimmers because it's a great upper body conditioning exercise. If we want to, to sort of get some of that, that uh, metabolic or, or that strength endurance in the, in the shoulders. Um, but I think it, is, it purely comes down to the art side of programming. At metabolic, it's easy to get someone tired. I, I was, I've trained squads before, we've had like technical coaches, that I would talk like a rugby specific coach, you go, your SNC coach don't know what he's talking about, I'll show you a workout, which basically ends up in making someone sick. And I'm like, anybody can make anybody sick. Yeah. Like how you're actually gonna create a physical adaptation which reduces injury and actually creates a performance change, yeah. that's a little bit of science. Like you've used a phrase with me before, like, more is not better. Sometimes more is just more. Like, yeah, we used to why are we say that. We used more? to take and make saying that. Just like, is that if we've done enough already, or are we just doing more for the sake of doing more? Yeah. Swim coaches are great. Or doing more because we lost at the weekend and you're just getting punished. <laughs> so for you, Tom, as a guy who knows his stuff, like my, and for anybody who can take a message away from this, is when you write a training program, ask yourself why. Like, why is that yeah. exercise in there? What am I looking to achieve? Start with that. What do I want out of this session? and then it becomes much easier. And if you understand what your acute variables are within that, rep yeah. sets, time, recovery, yeah. Yeah. intensity, distance, all of those sorts of things, then that's how you then start to go, right, if I know that these are my parameters, these are the exercises which I'm gonna use, I don't want the guys resting. Yeah. And a push-up into, into three or four different push-up variations, yeah. it's just movement. And if, yeah. and if it's difficult, and the intensity is right, and the rest is low enough, the heart is going to have to work yeah. harder because we're going to starve ourselves yeah. of oxygen. Yeah. Because I think we can't recover fast enough to continue yeah. to do the work. Yeah, the biggest, something that doesn't get talked about a lot and the biggest thing you've mentioned there is about, um, is about rest and like you're getting your adaptation based upon the amount of rest you're giving them. Um, 
And then just if you want it to be like total body, make sure there's some lower body, there's some core, and there's some upper body stuff. So if you actually want them to be, you've got people that you need to, you want them to focus on the lower body, well then, it's not rocket science, make sure there's a load of lower body stuff yeah. in there. Come on, it's upper body, upper body. It makes me think about a circuit I used to do. So I knew that, for example, if I wanted to improve VO2 max, there's a, there's a set which you can do where you work for four minutes, work up to 90% of VO2 max. And you can work that out or you can go on heart rate zones or whatever. Um, but then you would do three minutes at 70% active recovery so it might be like push hard four minutes build up to that 90 percent heart rate i think rather than vo2 max so i think it's 90 percent max heart rate and then you give yourself that active recovery you drop it back down to 70 and then you go again you do that four times and that's been shown research has shown that actually gives you quite a good adaptation in terms of improving um, vo2 max well i knew when i was training with squads i couldn't get them to run at 90 percent for four minutes because try and do that yeah. like it's not easy your guy tom you'll know that with the marines they probably can push themselves to that so if you can push that zone great football players will i'll be like let's run hard and they'll be like most of them will never kind of hit that and we didn't have heart rate technology to go to monitor them so what i did was separate into five different circuits and I think I'd like, it worked out about 30 or 25 seconds or 20 seconds and five minutes of transition to the next one. And then each one of those ones was like squat jumps, push ups, like get up on the floor, forward roll, getting up, getting down, just yeah. keeping people moving. But like what the guys could do, what my guys could do in those environments, they could work hard for 20 to 25 seconds. Yeah. And they actually, they didn't know that they'd done four minutes in yeah. 90%. And then I gave them an active rest, jog around the pitch, which they were all right yeah. to bring the heart rate down. So it's then it just comes to, that's the art side of packaging up the adaptation and yeah, the way yeah. which your guys are going to engage with. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Right. Great. That is, we've, yeah. whew, it's a lot. Hopefully you've made it this far. Yeah, I know. There was yeah. some good stuff in there. <laughs> well, I, hopefully. If you've got, um, <laughs> if you've got, give yourself a pound of, pound of. If you've got any more questions for us uh, related to training, um, anything hairstyles uh, comment in the comment uh, below and we look forward to uh, answering those as much as we can the best ones or ones we feel are going to give the most amount of benefit to other people are we'll, we'll answer in the next Q&A and Q&A 9 um, if you haven't subscribed and what yeah oh go on no guys the ones that rub me up the wrong way they will always get answered if I've got some got my soapbox so if you haven't, Sorry, if you haven't subscribed, click, on. click up there. If you haven't got our free beginner's guide and you want to get started, I know loads of you follow our stuff, but you still haven't even got our free beginner's guide, that's down there. And then last uh, Q&A, which Q&A 7, is up by Tim's over there. So until next week, class dismissed.